Okay, it's recording. Yeah, thanks for joining. Uh, today we have two presentations. Um, so first up, we're going to have Everett. Uh, so Everett are going to present on liquid staking positions. Uh, so Everett is a Cosmos zone uh, that are building out uh, liquid staking. So interesting to get a view on, on what they're building out. And then we're also going to have Hyung from uh, Bee Harvest. Uh, he's going to present uh, on DDEX, um, delegation uh, DEX. So, again, interesting idea. So, uh, we'll hear what he has to say. Uh, so, both, both of them are going to run through a presentation. What we'll try and do is we've got an hour and a half, so I'd say like 20 minutes, something like that, for presentations, and then they have plenty of time for questions. Uh, and then you know, and then and then we'll we'll go to Hyung then, and and he can kick off. So yeah, if we can kind of try and keep it to forty-five minutes each, so maybe twenty, twenty-five minutes for presentations, and then twenty minutes for questions. Um, so I guess uh, I'll hand it over to Everett. Um, so Ryan, do you want to take control and share your screen? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, let me just go ahead. Um, just one second. I, I got to like get some of my settings reconfigured. Um, okay. Uh, all right, uh, is this working? Yep, we can see it. Perfect. All right, so we're Everett, uh, and um, we would like to share our, our ideas on liquid staking positions, or what we like to call liquid staking position, uh, positions. And let me just first briefly start with our problem statement. Um, I'm pretty sure many of you guys really already know about this, but uh, just to reiterate, um, when staking and in the future DeFi and also decentralized, app decentralized applications as well, um, they're going to be very active within the ecosystem. Um, but if you look at the, in oh, sorry. Oh, damn. Yeah, um, if you look at the incentives, uh, if you consider the incentives, then we believe staking and DeFi will eventually compete with each other and cause like this cannibalization, cannibalization event. And um, so this is one primary problem we have found out. Other problems that could arise include like interchain transfers. So if you're, if you're, uh, if Ethereum moves on to like post Casper, and there's a staking reward on Ethereum, then you'll be disincentivized to transfer those to the Cosmos ecosystem. And there is also this minor problem about not being able to hedge one's staking positions. So uh, let me just go down to the key component of our um, product or to be product. And the first one is obviously gonna be IBC or inter-blockchain communication. Um, IBC is just an interchain data transfer protocol that allows tra the transfer of data between different blockchains or different Cosmos zones. And another one is interchain accounts or what we like to call ICAs. So these are basically accounts that are controlled by an external chain, um, for example, a Cosmos zone via IBC. So if you think about it, these are a bit similar to contract accounts in the case of Ethereum. Um, which are controlled by its, con its own contract code. So if you're really interested and uh, want to learn more about this, you can read about ICF 27 
And in there, we have defined a general mechanism um, that could be used to register into chain account and allow the transfer of transaction bytes. So um, a bit more about ICAs. Uh, first of all, you have to create an account on the target blockchain. So the way how this works is there's an account owner where we're just gonna assume it's gonna be a Cosmos zone. And the account owner first sends a register account packet to the target blockchain. That will create an account, um, an interchain account on the target blockchain. And after that, the target blockchain would, would return an account address to the Cosmos zone, the account owner, um, a acknowledgement that the interchain account was created. And after the account was created, in order to send transactions using the account, then the Cosmos zone that could then send a transaction execution packet to the target blockchain. And then the target blockchain will authenticate and then execute the transaction within the chain. And also for this case, it will return an execution result or an acknowledgement packet back to the Cosmos zone. So those were like the key components. Let's now move on to the really basic structure, the basic idea of the entire thing. Um, if you think about it, it's quite thick, it's quite simple. So there's the user and there's the interaction point Everett. And whenever you transfer base tokens via Everett and delegate them to a validator, we would like to have a, an, another token uh, minted which acts like a, uh, a rep representation of value of the base token that was transferred. So in the case for Cosmos, the base token would be atoms and the representation of value would be B atoms, which are short for bonded atoms. And to go in a bit more deeper into the basic structure, it's just assume there's a user and a validator X, which will get the delegations uh, later. So a user sends like 100 atoms to Everett first, and then how this will get processed is, um, so the 100 atoms are first gone to Everett's custody, and then um, and then the user then sends a an, an, another transaction specifying which validator, in this case validator X, uh, he or she wants to delegate those 100 atoms to. And then the delegation happens, and then the Everett um, protocol prints out like a receipt, the representation of value, uh, which in the, this case will be B atoms. So let's just assume for now that for every one atom you put in, you get one, uh, you get one B atoms. Uh, a one-to-one -one ratio, quite simple. So we had a few targets um, that we wanted to incorporate in the design. And our number one priority is to have maximum usability for the product. And in order for this to work, we first had to have um, two sub criterias. The first one is having high liquidity for the B atom itself. And the second one is to have a very low entry barrier for users. And in order to have high liquidity, you need to have high fungibility. And I'll explain about this later. And, and, and then our target is to have high fungibility, obviously. And for the low entry barrier part, we decided upon a one-to-one -one peg design. So B atoms being one-to-one -one price peg to atoms. So the reason why we thought one, a one-to-one -one price peg was very important is, for example, if you think of the re relationship between DAI and US dollars, if you think from a pure value perspective, then mo you can realize that most users basically treat DAI and US dollars as, as, the, uh, as pretty much as the same asset, even though in theory, those two assets are completely different in theory. So, but, uh, but we believe that um, that price peg there between DAI and USD really gives it a lot of mental utility in the users because now it's much more simple to in interpret and utilize in, in various applications. So by having the same one-to-one -one price peg within B atoms and atoms, we thought we will be able to utilize that feature as well. So um, 
in order for these designs to work, we had to consider a few problems that could arise. So going back to the one atom to one B atom example, um, what could happen here is a slashing event could happen. A validator might double sign and you might get like a 5% slash. So the 100 atom that was um, delegated to the validator would decrease in number. Um, let's say it, it's now 95 atoms, but it is very difficult. Um, technically, it is very difficult to increase or decrease the number of B atoms within the network because the the point of the network is to ha is to make B atoms B atoms liquid. That means the user is free to sell those B atoms, utilize them, or reinvest them, or do whatever they want to do with them. And because the user might not be uh, might not be holding. Uh, e even though the user might be responsible for the slashing event happening, the user might not even hold those B atoms currently. So increasing or decreasing the B atom numbers within the network, it's very difficult. And if you look at the numbers here, there's now 100 B atoms um, per, um, and, which is backed by 95 atoms. And the exchange ratio or the backing ratio is now at 95%. And this goes against our initial one-to-one -one price break design. So um, in order for circumvent, circumvent this, we had to implement a bit of a collateral to buffer out the possible slashing uh, events that could happen. So um, another problem that could arise is because because the Cosmos Hub or other proof of stake networks have multiple. Um, yeah, uh, may I continue? Yeah, so um, because the Cosmos Hub has like multiple validators and, and it's the same case for like other proof of stake networks and different validators have different commission rates or different slashing probabilities. So say for example, a user delegated to two different validators, validator one and validator two, both of them using the Everett protocol um, to generate B atoms. And let's say the collateral, it, collateral ratio is like at 10%. So you put in 100 atoms, you get 90 B atoms. So, and then, the, and then like time passes by um, new atoms are minted and given back to validators and delegators. So, but the difference here is that validator two has a bit low, uh, has a lower commission rate than validator one. So say for example, validator one uh, now has a theoretical balance of one, 105. However, validator two has, has now a theoretical balance of 110. But as I've said before, it is very difficult to um, vary the number of B atoms uh, within the network. So the, the number of B atoms remains the same. If you look at the total numbers, there's like 180 B atoms to 215 atoms. And this also goes against our one-to-one -one price break design target. And even if we change the design so that B atoms accrue um, atoms as uh, atoms as like staking rewards. So the holder of B atoms will receive atom rewards, um, staking rewards. Even, even if we change the design to that, um, it also goes against our principle of validator fungibility. So if you look at validator one, you're receiving five atoms for 90 B atoms. But if you look at validator two, you're receiving 10 atoms for 90 B atoms. So the ratio is different per validator and, and um, it is not possible to um, make the design work in this sense. So in order to solve this, um, to add validator fungibility, we d divided the, um, so we, we, we decided not to give out any kind of rewards or governance rights to holders of B atoms, instead those rights or rewards will be given out to the holders of the position. So a position is like, um, you can think of it as similar to like 
a relationship between CDPs and dyes. So B atoms will be like dye and LSPs, uh, liquid staking positions will be like CDPs. So the holder of the LSP will be receiving the governance rights and the staking rewards. So if you, if you change it so that it's, it works like this, then you can make it fungible among different validators. And another problem that could arise is, is the possibility of interchain transfers. Uh, I'm pretty sure this was mentioned by Sunny in the last talk before, but um, this is also quite a big problem. So let's say user A bins B atoms, uh, but decided to send them to a different zone, different cosmos zone, zone A. And then in order to do that, you go through a peg zone um, and then you receive it on the other end. But what's different here is that user A decides to transfer those B, B atoms on zone A to user B. So this is like possible, but the problem that could arise is that the Everett zone managing the distribution of rewards is, uh, is not able to be aware of the transfer that happens between user A and user B. So if individual B atoms were to accrue rewards or governance rights, the Everett zone will have a very hard time assessing the ownership, like who's owning this, who should be getting the rewards, who should be having the governance rights. And in theory, it is possible so, so that any, every transfers will be going through like IBC back to the Everett zone so that the Everett zone could assess all ownership. But this will drastically increase the complexity of the network and, uh, and we believe it will also increase the um, user's mental barrier as well. So um, just to go on to the uh, architecture overview. So first of all, a user sends tokens to an interchain account on the Cosmos Hub, which is owned by the Everett Zone. Um, and then the user also sends a um, uh, and, the, and then the user also specifies which validator he or she wants to delegate to. Uh, after verification, um, the sent atoms will be staked or delegated to a validator. And then after, when everything goes right, the Everett zone will mint new B atoms, and, which will be given out to the user. And then the user is free to like utilize or re reinvest them into various applications. So a bit more of a step-by-step -step process of this will be like this. So the network configuration is that there's the Cosmos Hub on the, on the left and, and the Everett Zone on the right. So you, by the use of interchain account, it is possible to have control of assets between two different blockchains, the Cosmos Hub and the Everett Zone. So you first send atoms to the uh, Everett Zone's interchain account on the Cosmos Hub, and then you specify the validator um, on the Everett Zone, which will be processed by the Everett Zone and sent to the Cosmos Hub via IBC, which will lead to the delegation happening. And then, as I've mentioned before in the ICA part, interchain accounts part, there's a confirmation that will go back to the Everett Zone. And if everything goes right, a new LSP, similar to a CDP, uh, a position will be created for the user. And then the B atoms will be newly minted and granted to the user's account. So an important thing here, here, here about LSPs is that LSPs, could, LSPs, that, um, LSPs that were opened can be only closed by the initial user that, um, that first opened it. And in order to close that LSP, you need to have uh, the initial amount of B atoms you first generated. So a bit like CDPs. And then, oh yeah, by the way, this is all the bonding process. And you, have, you actually have to allow the reverse, uh, the unbonding atoms to happen. And the method here is first you acquire the initially generated amount of B atoms. And then you request a LSP closure to the Everett zone. So the B atoms you acquired will be burnt and then in a in delegation request will be sent via IBC to the interchain account. And 
which will cause it cause the atom to undelegate. Um, so you wait for the unbonding period to end. And then after that, the Everett Salem will also send a transaction, will, which will send the unbonded atoms to the user's account at the Cosmos Hub. So uh, as I've mentioned before, if you put in atoms, it will be divided into two different forms. One is, one is liquid and one is illiquid. So the liquid form will be bonded tokens or B atoms, and the illiquid form will be like LSPs. <laughs> So bonded tokens, they're a representation of locked up value. They do not accrue any kind of rewards, staking rewards, or nor do they carry any governance rights. The governance rights, um, if you look at the liquid staking positions plot, they accrue the rewards and they carry the governance rights. So the liquid staking position is like a representation of a open position of a user. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, one small thing about redelegations. Um, it, it's also quite simple. It's, um, so a user just submits a redelegation request on the Everett zone, which will be transferred to the Cosmos Hub via IBC. And then the redelegation would happen. Um, yeah. So is it going what, back, what uh, um, uh, you can go ahead, yeah. If you go back to the previous slide where you have this, uh, no, one more, back. Uh, you know, where you have the B atoms and the liquid staking. So oh. also, yeah, that one, no, the next one, yeah. Okay. So that also liquid staking positions are also what absorb the full kind of slashing risk, is that correct? Yep. So the liquid staking position also contains the amount of collateral that was initially um, required in order to open the position. Yeah. So the holder of the liquid staking position is responsible for any slashing events. Yeah. So I guess if like, let's say, if there was something like correlated slashing where there could be like outsized events with like high slashing penalty, then it, it, it will make this design a bit uh, challenging. Uh, yes, um, we are currently trying to figure out other methods or changes in the design to uh, accom accommodate other methods like proportional slashing or 100% slashing in the case of Solana. Um, yeah. We are still working on, on a solution on that. Okay, okay, thanks. But like uh, for the current Cosmos Hub design, this is like, this works. Yeah, sure, I agree. So um, back to the fungibility part. Um, fungibility of uh, of liquid um, of liquid tokens can be divided into two parts. One is staker or de delegator fungibility, and the other is validator fungibility. So delegator fungibility is uh, works works within a works within the same validator. So if you delegate it to the same validator, then no matter who you are, the tokens you, you receive will be fungible among each other. And validator fungibility is a bit more of a broader concept. Uh, even if you delegate it to a different validator, um, the, token, the tokens you receive are still fungible among all different validators. So um, the, using the design we are currently designing, uh, it, is, it is possible to achieve both delegator fungibility and validator fungibility. So, um, so I, okay, yeah, you can go. I, I don't really understand what you mean with this. Do you mean by, like, do you mean the fungibility of the atoms? So what does delegator fungibility and validator fungibility mean? Uh, so in this case, the fungibility of B atoms, or more exactly, the fungibility of the staking derivative itself, although we decided not to use that word. So, so both of them refer to the fungibility of B atoms? Or? So um, in the case of delegation vouchers, uh, if you delegate to a different validator, then, then so 
let's say there's validator A and validator B. In the case of delegation vouchers, if you send one, uh, delegate 100 atoms to the A and another 100 to B, the tokens you receive, they're not interchangeable. But in the case right. of Everett, um, you will still, um, even if the validator is different, you will still receive the same type of tokens, which are fungible. Sure, sure, okay. So that is like validator fungibility. Um, so another feature, it's a bit obvious, but um, another feature of this is it being non custodial uh, custodial sorry yeah. I forgot <laughs> anyways uh, so um, because of this we can achieve universal liquidity so in the case of DAI and stable coins um, each exchange or each centralized exchange they are willing to mint stable coins of their own but by combining all their incentives to a single token, which is DAI or Tether, it is possible to gain a network effect between different exchanges. And we believe this is going to be the case. This is also going to be the case for decentralized finance. So because there's like a central one type token that acts like a staking derivative, you can utilize that among different decentralized applications if they only accept, um, if they only decide to uh, accept that staking derivative. So yeah, um, I'm mentioning this because uh, we, I, we believe there's gonna be a huge network effect just by this. And a bit more extended from the fungibility matter, we also think liquidity is very, very important. So if you don't have validator fungibility, if you receive different token types, if you delegate to a different validator, and this, this is also gonna cause a huge decrease in uh, individual token liquidity. And the Cosmos Hub currently has 125 different validators. And if you, if you issue a token, per validator, then there's gonna be 125 different types of tokens. So this is gonna be a huge pain for other decentralized applications to implement staking derivatives. And the liquidity will also be split between those 125 different token types. And one another special feature that could arise is the ability to leverage on, uh, on positions. So, you can first use Everett to create a bonded token, B atoms, and then you can exchange those B atoms on the open market with atoms. And then you can also stake, uh, you can also delegate those B uh, atoms that you just bought via Everett to generate in turn more B atoms. And then you can repeat this process to some degree. Uh, you cannot do this forever because every time you go through this cycle, you have to leave out a bit of collateral. So one interesting aspect that uh, one interesting feature that could arise from this is because the exchange liquidity between B atoms and atoms are quite limited. Um, it is much more easier to leverage one atom than to leverage a million atoms. So it is so for small retail uh, delegators of atom, it is much more easier for them to gain a larger position, which gives out higher rewards and more governance rights, then for a whale to like triple or quadruple their position and gain a higher say in the network. So this could in theory help with the decentralization of the network, but this is like debatable. And next is like risk isolation. Uh, this also applies for pretty much every other liquid staking project. Um, by not implementing the entire entire process within the Cosmos um, Cosmos protocol itself, the risk of failure is divided. Uh, it, it's it's not integrated within the protocol. So even if Everett fails, the Cosmos Hub will still be functioning. So the risks of failure they're only 
distributed to those participating in liquid staking on Everett rather than just like forcing all atom holders to go through this risk. So um, just a few pros and cons. Uh, these are the pros. Uh, we prioritized uh, a high level of fungibility. So it also had, so it is fungible across all validators. Um, so this is a very good um, feature in, in our opinion. And because there's only a single type of token that arises from open validator, um, we also believe it's gonna be much more easier to integrate to other decentralized applications or secondary use cases. And this, uh, if the design is a bit more changed, then it could also be applied to other proof of stake blockchains as well. But the problem is, uh, is first um, the collateral part. A collateral is also required to, in order for all of this to work. And the actual B atom holder is not having governance rights that um, it is also debatable, but it could cause uh, deviations in the network's future. And, and also the, um, the reason to hold on to B atoms um, is a bit more less than other protocol designs. And, um, and lastly for, so there's, there's a thing called shared security for uh, in the case of Cosmos and and because of this, um, um, there might be a problem with integrating ever within Cosmos with shared security. Yeah, so like this is like pro pretty much it. This was like the overview of the entire entire protocol. If if you go back to the tranching part, uh, how, yeah. How do you expect? Uh, the two the two assets to be uh, to be priced. Um. So. I like actually you, you, you're separating two things with the governance yeah. on one hand, uh, uh, an illiquid form and a liquid form. Uh, mm -hmm. What what the users want basically is to have access to. To, to, to an asset that represents the value that is uh, bonded. Uh, yep. uh, how, how, do, how do you think the pricing mechanism, uh, uh, what, what kind of pricing uh, mechanism you guys thought of? So the, so it's not actually like a pricing mechanism, but it's just like a theory. So if you think of it, if you combine the bonded tokens, the B atoms with the liquid staking position, then you're able to reclaim the bonded atoms uh, in the Cosmos hub. So the value of bonded, at, bonded tokens plus the value of, liquid, of a liquid staking position should result in, a, in the value of an atom. So because- Not the value of an atom, the value of, it's going to be the value of a future atom after 21 days. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That also uh, included. Minus the slashing rate. I mean, it's a little bit more complex, but let's say let's let's say that it's a uh, value of an atom. Yeah. So um, even if you consider the unbonding period, um, because because the unbonding request uh, because there are no delays in sending the unbonding request. Yeah. Um, it is still possible to perfectly arbitrage between that. So. I don't think there's good. I don't think there's going to be a significant discount because of the unbonding period. Um, yeah. Anyways, um, to to just move on, um, I I believe for the B atoms because they don't accru accrue any staking rewards or governance rights. I think there's going to be a bit of a discount there, but because it is similar to like MakerDAO, you can arbitrage die by opening or closing your position because the same thing is possible here. Um, I currently believe that the deviation of price between atoms and B atoms, it's not gonna be that severe. And some might argue that LSPs will be much more value, valuable because of the uh, amount of special rights they have. But 
uh, but um, it, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm I'm not arguing uh, either 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 sides. I'm I'm wondering uh, how the pricing will happen, because I'm I'm wondering what is the value, like what, what is the real value of governance? Like you're separate. It's 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 an interesting exercise. You're separating both uh, sides. Uh, but uh, I'm really wondering how it's how it's going to reflect on price. Uh, I'm not saying that there is going to be a discount or not. I don't know. Huh. To be honest with you. Uh, so, so the effect of government uh, of the governance rights being removed from like the atoms uh, is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, uh, I'm wondering uh, what is what, what is what is going to be the effect, uh, how it's going to work. Uh, how people are going to perceive it, uh, if there is going to be uh, a premium or a discount on one side or the other, uh, how the pricing of, uh, um, I mean, with the 21 day uh, unbonding period, uh, it makes it a future, uh, how the mm -hmm. pricing uh, is going to be uh, affected also in terms of t taking into account the, fa the fact that it's a future. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, I, 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 gain more liquidity. I, I have a sort of related question. Um, uh, I have okay. a kind of related question here. So okay, liquid staking positions, like are those transferable or like, did you guys consider turning that into some sort of like NFT that, you know, again, you can change ownership? Yes, um, that was actually a part of our entry back in the San Francisco DeFi hackathon. So cur currently, we're considering the LSP as as a, a liquid token or re representation, but it is possible to tra transform them them into a non fungible token and allow the transfer of those between different delegators. And another interesting thing is. For the uh, leveraging part, uh, this entire process, if there's an on-chain exchange, then this entire process could be automized and you could create leveraged LSPs, uh, a token representation of leveraged LSPs. So like a token, um, so if you hold that token, um, your slashing uh, so when whenever whenever a slashing event happens the amount that you get slashed for example could quadruples but also the amount of staking rewards you get quadruples as well so using this i believe it is possible to vary the risk reward ratio of the cosmos hub which is currently not possible and um back to the value thing question um because the governance right is um, removed from the bonded token, I believe that will cause a discount in the uh, fee atom itself and a premium on liquid staking position NFTs if they're exchangeable. And um, for the 21 day unbonding period, uh, so it's not, um, so, so it, it's it's going to act a bit similar to futures, and that could cause a bit of a discount. But um, an ex so if it, you're it, it trying, can be a discount. It can be also a premium. It depends on the uh, yeah, yeah. How, how it's priced. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, 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 there there is going to be a price difference anyway. Yeah, yeah, but like we're not aiming for a perfect one to one peg. Uh, rather, we're trying to. Um, make it follow a similar price curve. So, um, as as you've said, um, there's going to be but deviations in price. I I find it so. So let's say I can go I can go and buy an atom on an exchange for like, let's say it's five dollars at this point, and I can go and this gives me the ability to go and stake it and earn a staking reward and I can participate in governance. Mm -hmm. And now let's say this Everett is live uh, and it's working. And now I can also go and can buy a B atom. Now your thesis is that the B atom will be equal to one atom in value. But if uh, I buy a B, huh? Uh, with no? a bit of a discount. Yeah, but like, 
let's say I'm buying this, yeah, if I'm buying this B item, well, the B item doesn't give me the ability to earn a staking reward. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's a bit weird, no? I mean, this shouldn't be priced the same. Yep. Uh, we actually had this argument with Meher before. Um, so, the way how I would explain it is consider, consider transforming the LSP into an LSP. Um, so, you can you can make it as an NFT, and you can actually create it not not as an NFT, but a, as like a fungible token. And if you if you have so if you have delegated to the if there's like two delegators, and if both of them have delegated to the same validator, then it is possible to change the design so that the LSPs between those two delegators. Are are like a fungible token. So, if you delegate it to the same validator, then you um, you receive the same type of LSP token. Uh, okay, in but in this case, you're moving the problem to the LSP token. Uh, yes and no, because uh, there is a great example that could debate this. Um, yeah. And if you consider the case of Compound. Uh, if you're familiar with that. Mm. Um, so Compound introduces um, C tokens. So if you hold C tokens, you will constantly accrue rewards from lending, uh, from people just um, borrowing your tokens. And, and, um, and um, like, even if, I think there's a better example. So in the case of delegation vouchers, the ratio of exchange between atoms and the voucher itself, so it also, uh, it always increases. Um, so let's say there, you get one voucher for one atom uh, right now, but in one year you could receive 1.1 atom per one voucher. Um, so. So if you consider that case, and if you create a, a variation to the entire Cosmos hub, so that the inflation rate is not, the, the issuance rate is not 10%, but let's say it, you change it to 100%. That means the, that means if you, if you hold the delegation voucher, the price that the price of the asset itself will double every year, but that does not like that does not increase or decrease the current exchange rate um uh so okay I, if, yeah. uh, let's say the the, the the lsp is getting all the sla the, the the staking rewards and uh, um and is also getting uh, um the, the lsp is getting all the staking rewards and uh, uh, has all the the govern governance rights uh, basically, uh, you 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 earn uh, like you earn the uh, the staking rewards by by holding the the LSP. Yep. So you you have a much bigger incentive to hold the LSP than to hold the bonded uh, uh, the the bonded tokens. Uh, yeah, that's true. But that's only I I believe that's only one way of looking at value, and. Um, as I've said with the uh, delegation vouchers design as, as well, I, I, I'm not trying to attack any other designs. They're like also great as well, by the way. Um, like, let's say you have a voucher that the exchange ratio will double each year. Mm -hmm. And that, that is a 100% ROI uh, and that is tremendously valuable, but even if you have that feature, that does not in that does not increase the current value of the voucher itself. The ratio remains at one currently. Mm -hmm. So, I I believe the same uh, same theory as for the LSP part, and because the value of the atoms are at, of the uh,
because the value of the atoms are the value of atoms minus the value of LSPs, because the L value of LSPs could be pegged to a specific curve, just like delegation vouchers. So if you think about it, LSPs, if you make them into a fungible token, they will act very similar to delegation vouchers. I, I, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. It, it makes sense, like you're splitting in two. It's just that I'm, I'm really wondering um, how, how the market is going to perceive it. That's, that's, that's my whole point. And whenever you move it to, I mean, when you're moving it to LSPs, my point was just that, okay, so you're, you're, con you're focusing everything on the LSP and you're leaving the bonded uh, token uh, alone, but the bonded token is not going to, to have the value of, uh, um, of one atom. I mean, the, 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 can, can, we're just going to have to leave it there, guys. I think uh, oh, okay. I want to make sure Hyung has enough time to get his presentation done. Right. Um, sure. that, that was great, Ryan. Really good. Um, and great yeah, questions there. We, we, should, we might have some time at the end to come back to more, more questions. And I think over the next few weeks, we'll definitely come back to this model anyway. So we'll definitely uh, want to go deeper on this. Uh, and I think also on this trilemma you have there, I think it would be worthwhile to kind of have a session on that on one opinion. Um, but let's leave it there for now. Um, Hyung, are you ready? Can you take control of the screen there? And do yours. Okay. Just for the people who joined late, this is Hyung from B Harvest. He's going to present um, this DDEX, delegation DEX. Uh, so hand it over to you, Hyung. Uh, can you guys see well? Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, first of all, uh, I think uh, the definition of staking derivatives does not include uh, this solution, which is uh, delegation DEX. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a trustless uh, OTC market, which is not derivative. So um, I want to note, note that um, before beginning. So uh, DDEX is a uh, the decentralized exchange for trading delegations. Uh, and uh, we, we assume that uh, all the process for this trade will be completely decentralized. So uh, these three compo components will be used to um, approach uh, this process. So one is group account module uh, and the others are atomic transaction and timeout feature. So uh, I really want to introduce to many uh, of you about group account. Maybe uh, some of you might be not very familiar with. Uh, this is uh, currently in um, implementation by uh, region network, uh, especially by Aaron and Ethan. And uh, this is um, uh, quite an expansion of uh, key definition. So um, if you see the red red part, um, there's a account address and there's a control key. Uh, in most blockchain, we have a account address and a control key, but it's basically the same one. Just one is private and one is public key, but it's a uh, one pair. But uh, if you see the real world, you have the car and you have the car key. Th these two are completely different one. So uh, I was always thinking that uh, what, what I, I don't understand uh, why uh, in blockchain we have uh, the car and the car key uh, becoming the same one. So uh, this group account is splitting these two identity. Uh, so uh, the group account is a account uh, which is controlled by member keys. So, uh, but they, they have some more uh, features about member key definition. So some member key has a different authority on uh, acting on it, the group key, a uh, group account. Uh, but uh, re related to DDEX, uh, uh, one thing is that uh, the, the member key can change uh, himself. So 
it means that uh, ownership of a group account can be transferred to different key. So this is currently impossible in uh, most blockchain right now because if you know the private key right now, then you will know, know it uh, forever. So you, if you want to uh, bring this private key to uh, uh, trade uh, uh, um, opposite party, still uh, he, uh, you, you know the private key, so you cannot transfer the uh, account key. So so uh, this is uh, in very uh, uh, high uh, development right now, and uh, we expect that it will be uh, merged in uh, Cosmos Sub 4, we expect, yeah. So this this is uh, just a, a snapshot of our group module um, specification. And the other part is atomic transaction. So this is already uh, implemented feature in uh, Cosmos, but it's, it's not only for Cosmos, but if, if any blockchain can handle multiple message in one transaction, atomic transaction is possible. So atomic transaction means that you put uh, multiple messages in one transaction and then the blockchain does not uh, process a subset of these multiple messages. So blockchain will test all the messages and if all the messages uh, pass, then the transaction will uh, commit it. But only one, if only one uh, message fails, all the mess messages will not be committed. So that's the definition of atomic transaction. Yeah, so, so that's why I explained this uh, all or nothing execution. So uh, the, in, on, in trade uh, context, this is very important because um, buyer and seller should uh, transfer assets to each other. So um, each transfer should be happen uh, all, all should be happen or nothing should be happen. Well, in co in question, is this supported right now in the Cosmos Hub? Yes. Ah, very cool. So uh, Alice want to send something to Bob and Bob want to send something to Alice, then you can create a one transaction uh, containing two messages, Alice sending Bob and Bob selling, sending to Alice. So you, uh, Alice and Bob should uh, include each of their signatures in one transaction. Okay. So, uh, and timeout is an additional feature we need in, in this OTC market because uh, a transaction should be expired some, some, uh, uh, some time because uh, it cannot uh, wait forever. So uh, this will be in SDK uh, version point, point 0.39. So this is the issue in GitHub. Uh, so uh, I want to now uh, explain the, the, the structure of all the transaction. Uh, so we have uh, information about seller and buyer, uh, and also we have two messages. One message is uh, transferring ownership of group account from seller to buyer. So seller owning the account right now, that he wants to uh, transfer this ownership to buyer. So buyer need to provide his pub key to seller so that seller can change the, the only member key of this group account uh, to the Bob's uh, uh, pub key. And the second message is just a simple send uh, message from buyer to seller because buyer need to pay appropriate uh, liquid atoms to buy such a delegation object. And time height, we, Timeout height will be uh, uh, some future height, uh, which will uh, cause um, 
indefinite uh, failure of this uh, transaction. So after this height, uh, buyer and seller will just ignore this transaction forever. Why is that needed? Sorry? Uh, What's uh, important to the timeout height? Yeah, because uh, in this tra trade process, uh, buyer and seller uh, give and uh, uh, receive uh, their feedback each other. So that there's a, a, a maybe like three steps going back and forth. And then uh, some maybe a buyer send some information to seller, but seller might be not responded. Then buyer need to wait that forever. So timeout height is kind of a consensus of a uh, deadline. So yeah. each part can just uh, ignore the transaction um, completely. Yeah, because I guess otherwise, right, if, if you have like one party that assembles mm -hmm. the pieces, if they, if they have it and they can basically hold it back, it's like a free option for them no, to like exercise or not. Yeah, but uh, in technically, uh, there's a sequence which is working on this. So if the sequence is not right, the transaction will also fail. So maybe just a uh, wait, waiting part uh, can just uh, create another sequence, then the transaction will not success forever. So that's a kind of a fleet, one of the fleet uh, um, way for for each participant, but uh, I think uh, when we have timeout height, it's it's more gentle for each other to agree on the the dead right. Okay. Yeah. So this is the detailed process. So uh, seller post selling intention with or without signature. So if you have the uh, uh, technically, you don't need signature in this process, but if you have a uh, signature, then seller can prove their uh, uh, asset in hold, holding in, in his hand. So it, it will be more trustable, but uh, it does not need signature technically at this moment. And the buyer will see the seller's post and then buyer will reply to selling seller uh, to um, this selling intention so that a buyer wants to buy this delegation. And then seller will release, listen to buyer's reply and then confirms selling with conditions and signature. From this part, uh, we will have actual signature and all the transaction will be forming in this step three. So seller will trans, uh, create all the transaction uh, JSON, J Jason, uh, with conditions means that uh, seller and buyer will be already agreed on the price and everything in number one and number two. So, so all the conditions will be in the transaction and uh, seller will add his signature on this transaction. And then uh, buyer will, uh, seller will um, send this transaction uh, to buyer. But the transaction is not uh, completed because buyer need to also sign on this transaction to be complete. So buyer will be having the final hand of uh, finishing this transaction uh, while he can uh, see all the condition that uh, it is right, uh, it is agreeable, and then uh, finalize this trade with uh, his signature and just broadcast it and then uh, the trade will be complete with uh, atomic transaction of uh, two messages. So when it says conditions here, can yeah. you give some examples of like what kind of conditions? Yeah, could so um, uh, basically uh, we have uh, an address of group account, which is the target of uh, selling. Uh, so seller, want to sell this group account. So seller will repre uh, present the uh, group account uh, address on this condition. So buyer can just query the blockchain to see 
how many delegation is in this uh, wallet. So uh, that's one condition. And another condition is a uh, buyer uh, need to uh, respond to sellers about the price of the delegation. So I expect that uh, this market will be uh, 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 just uh, trading delegation, uh, which is a bonded atom against liquid atom. So if you have like 100 atom bonded in, in this wallet, then buyer will like bid something like 97 atoms because uh, it is it will be discounted a little bit because of the illiquidity. So this is the price of the delegation or maybe you can say uh, a discount rate of the uh, price. So this is the another condition. So this too is the most important condition. And then technically buyer needs to present his key so that he wants to control this group account. So seller can transfer this uh, ownership to buyer by changing the member key from his one to buyer's uh, pub key. So this is uh, another um, input parameter in, in transaction, uh, but it's just a technical one. So I think this three is the most important parameters and then timeout maybe, timeout height is also input parameter. Uh, I think that that's all. Okay, uh, one, one other question here. So is it only possible here to sell, like let's say I have a, a Cosmos account that's staking 100,000 atoms. Mm -hmm. Can I only sell that entire account? Or can I, you know, let's say transfer ownership of, of 10,000 staked atoms of that account? Yeah, so uh, that I think that part is uh, about um, maybe it, it is about fungibility or uh, splitability. I'm, I'm not sure the words, but uh, in, uh, in current Cosmos uh, design, uh, we cannot split the delegation, right? So, so uh, I researched that uh, some blockchain has uh, um, utility to split uh, the delegation to different uh, accounts. So uh, I, I'm not sure uh, not having splitting utility is standard or not, but in Cosmos case, we don't have it. So we cannot split this uh, delegation to different accounts. So uh, therefore a seller cannot sell proportional uh, delegation to uh, any arbitral buyer. Yeah, so it's impossible. Okay, okay. Yeah. So uh, in summary, uh, we have a utility for sellers. Seller can liquidate uh, delegation without unbonding period and buyer can buy this delegation with discounted price. And, and the process is completely trust trustless. So it, it is uh, very, uh, blockchain way. And uh, limitation is that a uh, seller cannot sell proportion of her uh, delegation. So this is due to the uh, on ability of Cosmos to split the delegation. And, mm, and also this trade process, if you see again, you, the seller and buyer is going, going back and forth several times. So if they are not very diligent or uh, very uh, uptime, then, then we, you need to wait a lot of time. So uh, it, the trade can be very delayed or maybe uh, trade can be failed because of unresponses or some uh, wrong numbers on conditions uh, or like uh, passing timeout height, uh, et cetera or maybe some seller will change her mind. Uh, so, so there are uh, quite a, a high possibility of trade failure here. So also the trade is not immediate because of uh, uh, go, going back and forth um, responding uh, process. So 
uh, if you split, if, if you can split delegation from a uh, state machine level, then uh, users can split delegation to separate addresses. So it, the, the market will be more liquid because you can like buy and sell very small amounts of delegation. So I, I expect uh, if it is possible, then uh, the, the bid and ask amount will be very small. So it is, it, it will more look like a, a ordinary a fungible token market. And also uh, if there is a DDEX market maker so that uh, he has a, a lot of account with different amounts in it and he just do all the bid and ask uh, providing in, in this market, then uh, it will be uh, working more like a fungible uh, token market. So these are additional expansion of, of uh, delegation decks. So uh, that's it. Dong, just one question. Um, this delegation split, have you looked into how, how hard this would be on the puzzle solve? Is it, is it, would it be an easy fix to make? Uh, splitting, you said? Yes. Yes, uh, it is very easy. And uh, actually last year in Berlin, we already proposed uh, a, a solution uh, in code base and it, it changes like uh, only like, uh, like I think it's like about a hundred lines. So it is very short, uh, it's very easy. Okay, cool. So, and your view is that this can run as just a simple marketplace. This this doesn't require any blockchain infrastructure, right? This could just be a website that yeah. uh, that that feeds transactions straight into Cosmos Hub. It's completely off-chain process. All the process is off-chain, but trustless, uh, and only on-chain working on is just uh, execution of uh, this single transaction. Okay, and do you envisage people doing swaps across proof of stake chains? Mm -hmm. Sorry? Do you envisage people doing swaps then across chains? Can I swap like delegated atoms for delegated Kava token? Oh. Uh, that would be great. <laughs> um, I am, uh, I, I didn't imagine that before. Uh, but I don't think it's, it is not impossible. Uh, I think uh, if IBC works well on the group account uh, transactions, so group account transaction means that we need to transfer the, the ownership. Uh, so you need to transfer the ownership to different account. So if this transaction is uh, possible on uh, IBC, then I think uh, it is possible, but it is it, it will be not naturally possible with IBC because uh, IBC needs a new application to support this group account feature. So you need to build uh, this uh, specific application which uh, allow group account uh, interchain transaction. Okay, which you, you could imagine that you could move assets over IBC to the hub and then do the atomic swap on the hub and then transfer them back like if once you have a group account feature. Mm. Yeah, uh, uh, frankly, <laughs> I, I, I think I need more time to think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But I, I, I intuitive, intuitively, I think it, it will be possible. Uh, Jung, this uh, this delegation splitting feature is the message delegator change that was implemented by B Harvest in Berlin Hackathon, correct? Uh, so in Berlin, what we uh, develop is uh, uh, actually a delegation DEX, uh, but we have a, a additional uh, PR, which is uh, allowing a splitting of a delegation so that uh, the version of Berlin is uh, actually an expanded version of delegation DEX because it allows splitting of delegation. 
And what is the difference between your Berlin design and this design you're presenting? Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, I, I misinterpret uh, our Berlin design. In Berlin design, we didn't use a uh, group account at all, but the Berlin design have uh, two uh, additional property of uh, delegation. One is splitting, one is uh, transferring ownership of delegation. So that is uh, quite a hardcore, uh, more hardcore imaginary um, uh, code base change uh, to allow this delegation DEX. But this, this version is more natural with uh, implemented feature, which is a uh, group account. So it works uh, as uh, for same target, but uh, the process in this version is more natural without um, um, state machine change. If I have a normal delegation today, mm -hmm. I, and I want to take advantage of the delegation decks, Mm -hmm. Will I need to convert my normal delegation into a group account compatible delegation in order to take advantage of this? Yes. Is there some uh, kind of conversion I, process here? Yeah, I think I already uh, wrote down there, but I didn't explain it. So the in, in, when you see related features, uh, the second one is a conversion from normal account to group account. So this transaction will be provided in group account. So we, we in, uh, for, from Behavest, we uh, insist uh, and also advise uh, region team to, or also the Cosmos SDK uh, uh, tendermint team to on include this feature because most of the users will uh, already having uh, delegation. And if, if they want to change it to group account, then they need to unbond it and send to group account and deleg delegate again. And that's uh, quite a very inconvenience. So let's just in protocol, let's provide a transaction type which can allow uh, conversion of a normal account to group account without unbonding. So uh, we expect that this feature will be built in the group account module. And can I, so this is a multi-message atomic transaction. Can I also bundle in a re-delegate in this transaction? And then the combined effect is I, who has a delegation with Chorus, is selling uh, selling the delegation to Bihar, uh, to Jung, and Jung is getting a Sikka delegation, and I'm getting atoms. Yeah, uh, that, that's possible, but it's not necessary, I think, because if you already get this delegation, uh, it's already ownership is already yours. So you can redelegate immediate, immediately. So, but uh, if you buy this delegation, you also buy the risk of double signing of the old validator for recent 21 days. So, that doesn't change. So uh, if, if, if you put a uh, redelegation in this transaction, it will be in immediately redelegated, but still the risk is present for recent 21 days. So I think it does not change much. Yeah, so I think the utility would be like if you, so th that's, that's true, the, this 21 days is what breaks fungibility, right? Like what would be really awesome is a delegation mm -hmm. decks in which, so, so right now in this delegation decks, there'll be like separate markets for all of them, right? Like one for Sikka, one for Bitfish and things like that. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. the only reason there is this theoretical fracture is this 21 day risk, right? Now, if I think of this 21 day risk, it's a tiny risk because the average slashing risk is less than once, once in 10 years. Mm -hmm. So 
So average slashing risk is less than once in 10 years. And the slashing penalty is 5%, which means, mm-hmm. which means like if you do the, if you do the math on it, this is, this is something like 0. 0.0025 is your, is the, is the price discount that should, that should be there because of this 21 day slashing risk. It's a very tiny discount that should be there. And yeah, somehow, uh, think, uh, most of the reason of uh, discount is not yeah. from slashing risk, yes. but it will be from uh, illiquid. illiquid. Yes. Illiquid. Yes. 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 So this illiquidity risk is shared for all validators. The slashing risk is different, but the slashing risk is 1% of the price difference and the illiquidity is 99% of the price difference. So yeah, if there yeah. was, if there was some way to neutralize this 1%, that would be like a hyper liquid delegation. Uh, but I, I want to uh, emphasize that even if we, we can uh, make it fungible, still you cannot uh, liquidate delegation itself. So the, the difference with um, average solution and other solution against this one is that this one is not derivative. So this one does not create another token. So you cannot uh, liquidate this position without selling it. So it's a, just a market, but not a derivative. So if you get the fungibility, maybe more liquid market will be formed, but you cannot bring this delegation to cover to uh, lend uh, borrow some money by collateralization, such kind of thing is impossible in, in this moment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. So it's uh, just target is different. Uh, this is just like, a, I think it's just OTC market, but more trustless OTC market. So b- basically you're creating, yeah, you're allowing, okay. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I think I see this as not a staking derivative. Just a, a more market for delegation. So, uh, but, but because it is not derivative, it does not have any systemic risk. Uh, it's, it's very trustless and everything happens um, without trust and uh, there is uh, no systemic risk on anything so far what 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 i'm thinking is yeah i mean to me ironically that it seems that where this proposal is is quite powerful uh could be if you have um actually you know we've talked before about exchange staking let's say you have an exchange that wants to stake as much of its balance of atoms as it can, but then it runs low on some atoms, right? Because people are doing withdrawals. Then they could use design to basically change from fake uh, atoms for the atoms. Um, I think that's probably where I could see this being very attractive. Mm. Yeah, if, if, if the participants does not care of a DeFi use case, but only that he, if he want to just recreate his delegation, then he will not need to find other more complex uh, solution. I but, think. but DeFi, I mean, this doesn't, it doesn't allow you, for example, to use like stake atoms in DeFi or something like that. Yeah, so that's a different use case. So it's, it's a completely different um, yeah, user yeah. base. Yeah, sure, totally, totally. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah, one question. Um, have you, have you talk, thought about how this market maker model would work? Um, like, we, can, can it support having multiple market makers then? Um, is there, is there kind of any issue with contention if you have a lot of market makers operating on, 
on what could be yeah. a relatively illiquid market is that are they going to get in each other's ways or how do you see them competing with each other so so this market is uh permissionless theoretically so any market maker can participate and uh do act as a market maker so uh market makers can compete each other too so uh this is a very a uh, natural process to see in future. And if I'm a seller, uh, will I see something then like a kind of bid ask spread or will I see something in the user interface that kind of shows me what potential demand is or what the, the discounts available are likely to be? Or how will that work? Uh, sorry? Uh, so, so, so what, can, have you thought about what the user interface looks like? If I arrive and I want to sell bonded tokens, the first thing I want to do is get a sense of what the market depth looks like, right? How, so how do I do that? Display, right? It, do, it looks I? like an order book, does it? Yeah, but uh, it's not like an order book because all the assets are different, so it's not fungible. So you will just see all the list of uh, bid and ask then you will just, just do something kind of sorting on uh, discount rates. Then you will see the most cheapest one and uh, expensive one. So if you go to OKEX, they have uh, some kind of OTC market for BTC against uh, fiat. And they have some different kinds of uh, payment model and, and amounts, so they, they cannot display this in order book, but they just display it in, in list and you can sort it with a price or amount. So if you want to buy more than 10,000 atoms, then you, you will just sort this with amount and price. Okay. And is, the, can, is there back and forth then between a buyer and seller? Like if I've, if I've got a 1 million atom position, do I then, can I negotiate back and forth? With a buyer, or how, how does that work? Yeah, uh, so number one and number two does not include any uh, signature or uh, transaction forming. So from step one and two, maybe a seller and buyer can uh, um, share their uh, Telegram ID or something like that so that they can just uh, negotiate each other uh, offline. Okay. So. So this is just like a OTC market. Okay, cool. Uh, any other questions? I think we're just close to the end of the time. Any well, comments on, on, yeah, I was just gonna say, any comments on, on, on the format today or any suggestions or recommendations or anyone got some ideas of, uh, what they'd like to hear in, in the next couple of calls. I mean, just one thing, I think that there would have been, might've been interesting to dive a little bit deeper into some things like, you know, for example, with, I guess, especially around Everett, there's like a lot of questions around, you know, um, you know, the, the, the topic of having like another chain, another staking token control, potentially a lot of atoms, you know, the sort of how we should think about it from a governance perspective. So I think there are like other questions to discuss there, but maybe we can also come back to those when we've done yeah. some, looked at some more protocols. Yeah, I agree. I definitely think there's a lot more there. Um, and then Marwan's question then just about how do we price both these assets, right? I think there's a big open question there of like, you know, what what is the governance right worth? How do you value that compared to like a liquidity premium on the other side? Um, so thinking about how we value those things, I think is is important because it's kind of key to the peg holding. So yeah, we definitely, definitely need to go deeper on that. I think as we get into Staffy as well, like the Staffy protocol is, there's some overlap with Everett as well. So I guess we'll get into some of those things as well. Um, 
any any recommendations of like are everyone happy with this that we like if we do like in the next session if we do the same format and do like some presentations and then some q a does that work it's good honestly yeah okay and uh yeah any any preferences who's who's ready to go next marwan are you ready yet to tell us all about your secret project <laughs> um, maybe not, not the next one but uh, the following one <laughs> okay we'll keep you on the list yeah, <laughs> thank we'll, you we'll, we'll, we're but I, I'm already going to to start writing something uh, as uh, as I discuss with Felix. Uh, I, I, I will write uh, uh, one, two, or three paragraphs to describe the solution and uh, uh, and the risks uh, that come with it as well, uh, the pros and cons, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'd be glad to to add. Uh, uh, a few pages to your long reports. <laughs> cool, sounds good. Yeah, we're we're working with Liam as well from Staffy, so he's agreed to present uh, when he's ready as well. So okay, um, we'll keep keep him on the list. Um, and then I guess we were we were, we were trying to get say capital, so I think we'll try again and uh, see if we can get them to present. Um, and then I think what Brian said, I think there's probably some. I think we'll start maybe next time with some side discussions, maybe get into governance or maybe get into some other more general issues that cut across the different solutions on the next call. Uh, so we'll send out an agenda for that in, uh, you know, in the next few days. Uh, but it'll be, you know, probably the same time in two weeks time. So keep the, keep the day free. We'll, we'll send a calendar invite. Um, okay. Is there anything else or will we leave it there? Uh, it's all good on my side. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks Thank a lot, guys. guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.